The 23rd Psalm is a favorite Bible passage to millions upon millions of people. Its wonderful simplicity, its complexity, reminds us of the truth that God is with us and God's love is complete for us. The wonderful Good Shepherd window that adorns our sanctuary at First Evangelical reminds us of this, and so the psalm. Today, then, we look carefully at the verses as we hear the music of Henry W. Baker, a 19th century hymn writer. In his verses, all six of them, he sought to bring explanation to the depth of these wonderful verses of Psalm 23. I'm thankful to our daughter, Suzanne Cotton, who had performed these for us a cappella, that we might compare the beauty and the bounty of The Lord is My Shepherd, Psalm 23, and Baker's The King of Love, My Shepherd Is. We'll make our way through the verses, one at a time, learning more about this wonderful psalm as we gather in contemplation and reflection. We will also hear three stories Three stories of saints past who have lived through pandemics and in the gift of God's grace become stories for us to remember and treasure and recognize that God is with us and the shepherd will not abandon us. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. Verse 1 of the King of Love, my shepherd is. The King of love, my shepherd is, whose goodness faileth never. I nothing lack if I am his, and he is my. Psalm 23 continues, He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. Where streams of living water flow, my ransomed soul he leadeth. And where the verdant pastures grow, with food celestial feed The three vignettes that I want to share today, these stories of faith, all began around about 1918 through 1919. From 1918 to 1920, Humankind suffered one of the deadliest epidemics of all human history. Estimates go from 17 million to 50 million people, maybe as high as 100 million, losing their lives to influenza, the Spanish flu. Our first story then begins with a young boy named Carlisle. He lived in Canada, and in 1918-1919, both of his parents died from that flu. He was put on a train and sent down to Wisconsin. He settled there in the area which was my first congregation. Carlisle was a janitor all of his life, but a man of great wisdom and insight, a man of level thinking and care, a man of great faith. It was a privilege to be his pastor. In his lifetime, he didn't have much resource, but he gave away all he could, always saying, I just want to wear out my body and then be done. It happened that he was done on an Easter vigil. Our daughter Suzanne and I were in town near the hospital, so we stopped to see him on that Saturday night. We knew he was dying. As the tears began to roll down our cheeks, I remember Carlisle looking over to our daughter Suzanne, a middle school child at the time, saying, oh, Susie, don't, don't cry. It's going to be okay. Such was the faith that this man, Carlisle, lived with as he survived the pandemic, losing his parents, and lived a life of faith through all of his 90 plus years. Returning to Psalm 23, he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Perverse and foolish oft I strayed, 
But yet in love he sought me, and on his shoulder gently laid, and home rejoicing brought me. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. In death's dark veil I fear no ill with thee, dear Lord, beside me. Thy rod and staff, my comfort still. Thy cross before to guide me. The second vignette tells of a woman who was not necessarily exceptional, except that she was a member of an exceptional generation, and some have known as the greatest generation. She too, like Carlyle, was born into a time of pandemic. Influenza was everywhere. She was a toddler during those desperate days. Although, as an adult, she really didn't speak of it much. By the time she was ready to enter her teens, the Great Depression had struck, and she would talk about that, having to go without. But yet, she said, most of our friends out in the country had the same we had, so we just got together and had fun. When she went on to school in town, she recognized the city kids had it better than she. As the Great Depression came to an end, this woman was ready to marry. She married a guy from her church. And they went off and moved away from home and bought a farm. Their first crop went in in 1941. In December of 41, the war began for the United States. And then again, for several years, as they had given up so much in the Great Depression, this greatest generation did what they could to save the world. Life had many challenges for this woman, and yet it didn't seem to change her much. There was, of course, the frugality of saving from being through the Great Depression. There was the, the fear of what World War had bring, but yet her faith was solid. Her faith was complete. And now as I think back, that faith uh, is, was, and always will be a great gift to me. I'm talking about my mother. She lived well into her 90s, starting out in those dangerous days of the pandemic influenza. She lived to be 97. And interestingly enough, in her last moments, it was my watch to be with her. And as her last breath came, I pulled out this psalm, Psalm 23, she died as it was being read to her by her son. I tell you the story of my mother, Grace Friederica Dusher Flader. Again, not because she was exceptional, but because she was a part of a generation that was exceptional. You know folks just like her. And they too, those saints, can be an example for us in these days of challenge. Psalm 23 continues, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup overflows. Thou spreadst a table in my sight. Thy unction grace bestoweth. And Transport of delight from thy pure chalice floweth. And finally, Psalm 23. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And so through Days, thy goodness faileth never. Good shepherd, may I sing thy praise within thy house for.
The third and final vignette comes from members of First Evangelical Lutheran, from the family of Justin Hyannick and Naomi Matthews. They're excited. They brought news of celebration this week to Facebook. They're pregnant. They're expecting a baby. What joy, what excitement. And yet, to be living through that in this time of pandemic, is it, to say the least, is challenging. And Naomi, Dr. Matthews, is an anesthesiologist at Great Plains Health, so she will, in the place of her oath, serve and care for patients. She will be uh, on the front lines of this current pandemic. On Facebook this week, we shared some stories on Messenger. I think that's the new way to communicate. Text messaging, Facebook. And she tells a story that her aunt relates. The story about Naomi's great-great-grandpa. As the pandemic struck in 1918, he was married with four kids. He was a pastor. They all survived. He and his wife, Ethel, were married 72 years. Naomi's aunt, Sally Burney, writes this. In 1918, my great-grandfather, the Reverend H. H. Utterbach, was a minister serving in Scott's Bluff during the Spanish flu pandemic. He wrote in his journal, in the fall of 1918, the terrible flu epidemic struck. Many people died. Our family, except me, were down with it all at once. I had as many as five grade five funeral services in a day. I found a Sally continues, I found a dissertation by Christian Watkins called It Came Across the Plains, the 1918 flu pandemic in rural Nebraska. Sally continues by saying it was a very interesting read and similar measures were put in place then as to help mitigate the spread as we're experiencing now. In stories like these, faithful people going through horrendous things, a pastor who was faithful to his people, in the pandemic and how the church became the church again even in those days naomi and i shared our stories swapped our stories on facebook this week in the end she brought wise words as she finished one exchange by saying those are the stories that we have to keep remembering indeed yes and so the stories we will remember as we remember that, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He will care for us all. The King of love, my shepherd is, whose goodness faileth never. I Amen. And again, we say, Amen.